Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you a little bit about the end cloth, gravity, and collisions. So um, I'm going to start by uh, creating a polyplane. And with my polyplane I'm just going to go ahead and increase this. I'm going to make it 25, 25, and 20. Oop, not 52, 25. The next thing I want to do is, um, it's really an important factor to keep in mind. So when we're using cloth, the higher the poly count, the more realistic your cloth will appear to be. Um, because it can bend, fold, you know, wave, yada yada. So um, this doesn't have too much information in here because it's go it bends at the vertices. So we really don't have too much. We have like a hundred different points at where it can uh, bend. So under my attribute editor here, under my polyplane, I'm going to set this to, let's just say, 25 and 25. I don't want to go too high because um, depending on the machine you're using, you want to sort of have, it's going to take a lot more to calculate if I had this even higher. Um, or maybe, let's just say, 50 by 50. That'll, that'll just take, you know, at least double the amount of time to calculate. So it depends on your machine that you're using um, and or if you don't mind waiting uh, while it's processing sort of this information um, is totally up to you but um, I'll try 50 by 50 if it's too sluggish I'll bring it down to 25 and 25 but this is a pretty good starting point here and what I'll do is I'm just going to drag this up and this will be my end cloth so I'm gonna just drag it up here um, let's see 20 let's just bring it up 25 since I've been bringing everything else up or no I don't want it to go that much let's go 10 Oop. so I didn't want to bring it up too high because I'm gonna create a little model here and uh, a little tabletop I guess so I'll have a little uh, cloth draped over my tabletop so I'm gonna start by creating a cube and this could be any shape you want. I think it'll just be easier for the software to calculate less collision points because we have, uh, it's going to be calculating at the vertices on here. And I'll bring it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to just go ahead and sort of maybe a little bit bigger here. I'm not going for a perfect model. I'm just kind of using this as an example. And then something like that. If I want to get really fancy with it, something like that. Right? And now I've got my little tabletop. So I'm going to add this to a layer really quickly so I can just focus on the polyplane. So I'm going to select all the objects on my table and do create layer from selected. And in here, I'll just call it table top layer. So I'll hide that for the moment. And I'm going to come back to my cloth here. It's called polyplane. And I'm going to go ahead and under my effects tab here, I'm going to go to end cloth and create end cloth. We don't need to play around with anything in the settings. There's, there's not too much in here. I just undid that, by the way. If I go ahead and show you the little the little box next to it, this is totally fine. I'm going to create a new solver. Just create end cloth. Now in here, I'm going to highlight my little nucleus here, and this nucleus is um, what controls the gravity on here. <clears throat> so you can change the start frame, and not only does it control gravity, it controls things like wind, uh, air density, and I'll show you that right now. Um, so you can start the frame, let's just say uh, you're modeling a flagpole with a flag or your character has a cape or something, right? And um, anything that you can think of. Um, and your start frame, you don't want the wind to pick up until, let's say, frame 200, right? Let's just say 200. So you could set your start frame to 200 and then that's when this uh, gravity or the attributes in this will kick in. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go into my attribute editor in here and under my nucleus one 
I can go ahead and play around with different things such as by default the gravity set to 9.8 I'm gonna leave it by default I'm not gonna change really any of these I'm just gonna explain some of them gravity direction so I could change the direction of the gravity so instead of having it fall at in the negative one direction on the y-axis which is up and down I could have it do uh, the X you know depending on which direction you're looking at could be left right and this could be back forward right it all depends um, so you could do you know zero on y axis and have the gravity fall this way um, at let's just say negative one and the z direction so you can play around with the direction of the gravity if you need to you have different things such as air density wind speed wind direction wind noise this would be great for a cape or a flag uh, so you could set the uh, the direction of the wind coming in at you know whatever angle right then you can change the amount of wind you have which would in essence create a waving uh, flag and then wind noise um, probably sort of distorts the the way the wind hits so it's not just one f fluid push it kinda uh, scatters how the wind would come at uh, the flag or cape or something. Um, ground plane, I'm not going to use this, but you could use the plane, plane origin. Um, and this is basically everything we need to know about this. Um, in the end cloth here, uh, or the end cloth shape, you can turn on collisions, so you could have it collide with objects. If you turn this off and it doesn't collide with anything, um, it's going to be quick to calculate, but again, um, you're going to, it's, it's, if you have a character or a flagpole or a table, it's going to go right through it. So, um, having collide on there. Also, having self collide, this is where it will collide with itself. So, and, you know, it won't overlap and sort of, let's just say both of my hands are here. It won't sort of, you know, go through the vertices or the faces. I hope that example uh, made sense. Um, so, we're going to have it self collide with itself thickness you can sort of set the thickness of the cloth if you will I'm gonna keep all this default but you can really go ahead I don't have a collision maps in here um, and really play around you can have the stretch resistance whether it's stretchy cloth or not um, and really play around with all of these different settings and get really complicated and, and really fun with it force field generation um, pressure and things like that so anyway you can go ahead and if you if you really enjoy this lab you can have a lot of fun with it all right so now that I covered the uh, different attributes in here and then time I would just leave alone enable warp time sort of speeds up sections of uh, frames and stuff and uh, we won't get into that um, anyway so now I'm going to turn back on my tabletop layer and I'm going to set this to collide with this so how I do that I don't need to if if I really wanted to uh, if this cloth was really long and gonna drape to the ground I would have like a ground plane in here right um, which it I would have it set to collide with so it looked like it was colliding with that as well but um, also I could have it collide with this and this but just for uh, uh, easier calculations for my for Autodesk Maya I'm just gonna set the collision to collide with my uh, tabletop right so how I do that is I could also enter my effects tab here and this is the create end cloth which we did up here under end cloth create end cloth and then we also have the create uh, nope uh, one, select one or more polygon meshes to act as colliders for end cloth. So this is I could use this also, or I can go in here for create passive collider. And now when I go ahead and I click play on my timeline, you're going to notice my cloth dropping. It's going to make contact with the table, and then it's going to sort of start to do its thing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And let's increase the frames. And you have to start on frame one, just just an FYI. You can't really just like jump around. If it is possible, let's see. Oh, I guess you can. Um, 
I'm going to start on frame one and then go ahead and hit play. And you notice, let's increase the time a little bit more, let's go 500 frames. You'll notice the I'm going to pause it real quickly. You'll notice right in here, had I, if I had more topology on this, I would get a much smoother result. You can see the hard edges on where the cloth is bending. I'll just keep going. Sort of let it do its thing. And this is where playing with the settings would really, really help uh, get some cool results. So really, honestly, that's all I'm looking for. Um, go ahead and hit play one more time. This is going to be pretty uniform. And something, something like that is cool. I mean, I could go a little bit more. But you can get really, really neat results. Now, bring this back. Let's just say... I'll delete that. Let's just say I had a round table top at the top. Create it to be a little bit smaller. Okay. And here's my table top. I can also go into my effects tab here and select the second one as to act as a collider. And now I hit play. And now you're going to see a much different result. But it's going to take a little bit longer because on that circular shape, I've got much more topology. And I'll leave it something like that. Um, much more topology on there that uh, it's going to take slightly longer to um, calculate where the collisions are happening because it's going to be vertice to vertice. It's going to, it's going to um, uh, react from the vertice on the tablecloth to the uh, vertices on the table itself and that's how it's going to um, calculate that information. So I'm totally fine with something like this. You can go ahead and submit something like this. It's uh, perfectly fine. And then the other thing is that um, under uh, your attribute editor on your nucleus, if you want to play around with some of these other settings, feel free, but it is not required. So anyway, um, that's all I've got for you in this video. Um, I hope you enjoy playing around with the end cloth and gravity. Uh, you can get some really cool results. Uh, you can think of like a blanket on a bed, um, uh, curtains, um, really whatever you can think of. So uh, curtains over a window. So um, yeah, uh, have fun with it. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. And message me if you have any questions.